Mbambasa village called Nyamain town, or Nyamain Bli, 1935, as I mentioned, on April the 4th. We don't have time to go to talk about how we got, April 30th rather, how we got to that April and the 30th, because my people didn't read book and so on. But we figured out how to calculate. When was Edwin J. Barclay president? All right, then we took it from there and so on. So we counted rice farms. How many rice farms were made? So we got to that, and uh, so that's the year is 1935. And what used to be the Kerrysburg district, and then Marshall Territory, and now the Ma Gibi County. That's where I originated from. And then because of the desire for education, I went several places. My father took me, we walked from Nyaman town to Jihurong by the Du River, Garin Aquino, went to Monrovia. And my father took me to a man named Nugent Gibson on Broad Street in front of the Episcopal Cathedral. He was my father's lawyer. And he wanted me to stay with him. You know the system we had in Liberia, the country people would bring their children to the civilized people as wars to get an education. So that evening when we got there, there was another boy staying there. I don't know his name. But then Mr. Gibson called the boy and myself to the kitchen where he was sitting at the table. And he took out money out of his pocket and put it on the table and the money made noise. In those days, there were no paper money, there was cash. Liberian coins and, and, and because the, the boy got attracted by the sound of the money he did like this in the kitchen and the man slapped him. He said, why, you want to steal my money? So anyway, we went and bought bread and brought the bread. You know, the fun people used to make all round sweet bread. Some of you are not old enough to remember that. Uh, and so we brought the bread. He ate all the bread, didn't give us any. We slept near the door, in the entrance, on the floor, on the mat. And five o'clock that morning, I ran away. Your laugh. <laughs> it's serious business. I ran away. Luckily, I found my father getting in a kino ready to go home. And he said, boy, where you going, where you going? I said, pa, I run away. The man, the man, not good man, bad man. So we went home. Then, as circumstances would happen, I went to Banga. There at Banga, I joined the Methodist mission there and went to school there, Banga. Banga Methodist mission. 1950, and then I finished the school there and went to Bogarty, Washington Agricultural Industrial Institute in Kakata. And I graduated from there and went to Cuddington. You call it University College now, but in those days it was Cuddington College and Divinity School. I graduated from there, and I became a Crucis scholar, and went to Syracuse University and did my master's in educational administration. I returned to Liberia 1963, 62, and uh, they were going to make me principal of the Methodist Elementary School that they had just built there in Sinkhaw. We call it J.J. Roberts Elementary School now. 
And uh, I refused to be there because, you know, Monrovia was not my kind of place. I'm a country boy. So I decided to go back to Banga to the school where I got started and became the teacher there and the principal there. And after uh, five years there, I got another scholarship, crusade scholar, to become a uh, preacher man. And I went to Boston University School of Theology. During the 1968, during that time, Ellen Sally was at Harvard. So we interacted, saw each other every now and then. I finished cutting, I mean, Boston University School of Theology with a degree in theology and went to Liberia back home almost the, the next day after my graduation and I settled in Monrovia. I was assigned to the College of West Africa as a Bible instructor and also a counselor. While there, uh, the Robert Carey, Dr. Robert Carey, tall man, some of you may remember him or not, uh, he decided uh, he's going to retire. And so I uh, was asked to serve as the chairman of the board. Three, three people chair the beginning part. And after that, I was made the principal of the school of the College of West Africa. From 1971 to 72, just about a year. Uh, 1973, Bishop Stephen Nagbe, who was our first Methodist bishop elected in Kepalmas in 1964, died. And uh, we went to Buchanan Grand Bassa for the Central Conference to elect a new bishop, and I was elected bishop of the Methodist Church on the first ballot. I serve as bishop of the Methodist Church up to 1980, for eight year term, up to 1980. When I came from Boston, I mean from, yeah, from Boston University School of Theology, I was in America during a very turbulent, turbulent time where the riots and against the Vietnam War took place and every, every week there was, every weekend in Boston, there was demonstration, student demonstration against the war. I participated in those and signed so many petitions against the war in Vietnam. I saw the Kent, uh, what the police did, I saw the democratic thing there in Chicago and all of those things. So I, uh, in my studies there, I saw something of demonstrations and so on. So I had a background of how people demonstrate and what you have to do to demonstrate and all of that. Uh, I studied under Dr. Walter Mulder, the dean of the school of the Divinity School in Boston. And my uh, concentration was in social ethics, Christian ethics, under Walter Milder and Paul Dietz. Social activism became my, my cup of tea. I uh, was involved in social justice issues, economic justice. Uh, and so when I returned to Liberia in 1971, I became a social activist in a sense that I was critical about the status quo of the conditions in Liberia, primarily in the areas of corruption and I expose corruption from the pulpit, talk about it, uh, preached about it. As a school teacher, I promoted justice, fairness, honesty, hard work, work ethics among my students. College of West Africa, I did the same thing. Taught students about honesty, work ethics, and justice, 
So this, these were arenas that I was already in. Then, as you may remember, the Vice President James Edward Green died. And Mr. Talbot, that I had known from associations in Banga at the Methodist School and uh, the Baptist Educational Convention, then decided to look for a vice president. There were several people on the short list of the president. I had been to the president as an advisor on some issues before this time. I had been in relationship with Stephen Talbot in some of his uh, problems with Albert Port and so on. I had contacts with Frank Emmanuel Talbot prior to all of these things in my <coughs> connection as the uh, Bishop of the Methodist Church. So I knew the Talbot family. When I was in school in Banga, there was a uh, Mr. Wesley Bailey, I think his name was a district commissioner, related to the wife, related to the Talbot family. So I knew of the Talbot family of Bensonville. Since my hometown was not far from Carysburg, just about two hours walk from Carysburg, I knew all of the Carysburg people. Uh, so I had interaction with many of these, uh, uh, these people. So it happened that uh, after the memorial service at E.J. Roy, no, not E.J. Roy, at the Centennial Memorial Pavilion for uh, Vice President Green, the president invited me to come to his Bentall estate. I had in mind that he had sent for me to maybe give him some advice on some issues or just talk with me, as he did from time to time. But he said to me that I, he was considering me as a vice president candidate. He had me on a short list. And then he rehearsed to me the number of persons that he had already talked with and that he had on his list. One of them was Jackson Doe. E. Reginald Townsend, uh, P.C. Parker, uh, maybe another person. But he said that according to the Constitution, the president and the vice president can't come from the same county, and therefore P.C. Parker and others were ruled out. So that remained Jackson Doe, Nimba County, Reginald Townsend, Marshall Territory, and myself, Bond County. I'm a transplant, Ma Gibby person from Bond County, Banga man. So I, I know how to speak Pella, 